The Karate Kid 2010 Ups of Martial Arts The sequel series to 84's Karate Kid somehow did the impossible, bringing back two of the film's main characters 30 odd years later and recapturing the energy and heart of 80's underdog cinema. Now Cobra Kai is back for a second round in the YouTube dojo to deliver another swift kick of 80's nostalgia in all of its blustering and boisterous glory. Appealing to aging Gen Xers and their kids alike, this multi-generational crowd pleaser continues to explore themes of redemption, forgiveness, mentorship, and acceptance with confidence but not an ounce of subtlety. And that's okay. It's this simplicity that is part of its earnest appeal, and creators Josh Heald, Hot Tug Time Machine, and Duo John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg, Harold and Kumar, save the series from self-seriousness with their considerable comedic savvy. The series picks up directly with the cliffhanger from last season, when the original battle-hardened sensei John Cress, Martin Keva, shows up at the Cobra Kai dojo that's been resurrected by his old student Johnny Lawrence, William Zeka. Fresh from a victory over childhood rival Daniel LaRusso, Ralph Macchio, and his prodigy at the All-Valley Karate Tournament, Johnny intends to usher his own students toward a more ethical way of karate to make up for the brutal ways he learned from as Johnny struggles with entering the 21st century, both technologically and socially, Daniel is realizing that he's not a natural teacher like his mentor, the late Mr. Miyagi, Pat Morita. Nevertheless, he's determined to get his Miyagi do karate dojo up and running to take on Cobra Kai. If only he didn't feel like he was failing his family and work in order to accomplish this task. Meanwhile, Season 2 has expanded the focus on its roster of teenagers, who bring a fresh and energetic immediacy to the conflicts. Their passions and pains are palpable, and therefore when they lose their tempers and lash out, often physically, it's regrettable yet understandable, at least more so than when their grown teachers use karate irresponsibly. Payton List, Cobra Kai Payton List, Cobra Kai YouTube Premium While the focus is still in its main three teens, Johnny's protege Miguel, Zola Maritna, his estranged son slash Daniel's protege Robbie, Tanner Buchanan, and Daniel's daughter Samantha, Mary Mauser, the series also takes the time to flesh out Dimitri, Johnny Basenzo, and Eli slash Hawk, Jacob Bertrand, a little more. Of the new batch of teenagers, the standout is Disney Channel star Payton List who was ferocious as Tori, an underprivileged girl seething with anger and resentment. Children of the 80s will have plenty to scratch that nostalgic itch with numerous callbacks to the Karate Kid films. There's a flashback featuring Morita that's so joyous that it's heartbreaking to watch because of his absence, and Johnny reuniting with his old Cobra Kai chumps is bittersweet given the inexorable march of time. Even the teenage characters have embraced the 80s in fun and surprising ways. What's old is new, and cool, again. Although backstories are sketched rather than explored fully, that makes more time for the over-the-top karate scenarios, which is frankly what the viewers want. Going beyond their wax on slash wax off chores, Daniel and Johnny find creative and entertaining ways to train their students into suddenly learning to block and execute a roundhouse kick. The series does well in pulling out the smaller karate skirmishes to keep the audience keen, but two rival doyos full of disaffected teens who know how to throw a punch will eventually escalate their conflict. The result is a full-blown, rib-cracking, conflagration of a battle that is breathtaking in its length and brutality. All credit to the young actors, most of whom didn't have any significant martial arts training before the show, for learning their moves to appear swift and effortless, as well as stunt coordinators Hiro Keta and General Kerfman for creating the melee. Although not as sophisticated as the fantastical martial arts scene in Into the Badlands or Cinemax's ultra-violent warrior, the fights in Cobra Kai feel more grounded and therefore more dangerous. A few quibbles. The portrayal of girls into women is still rather limited, with Tori being the most interesting and complex of the bunch. The rest are more often than not only concerned with their relationship to boys slash men or being involved with karate, which of course is conducive to romance on this show. One of the reasons behind a significant girl rivalry is one of the most depressing cliches in storytelling. As for the inclusivity on the show, it still hasn't improved significantly from season 1, despite the show taking place in Los Angeles, diverse San Fernando's Valley. Miguel and his mother continue to be the most significant people of color on the show, although a few more tokens have been sprinkled in for tertiary supporting roles. Meanwhile, the karate teachings remain fairly surface level without delving into Japanese culture or the philosophies behind it. The loss of Mr. Miyagi is still painful, no matter how much Daniel continues to pay homage to his old teacher. Perhaps part of the issue is that his own instruction was based solely on this one amazing but ultimately imperfect man. With so much of Daniel's training in the rear view, he really has no business instructing anyone in martial arts, at least not without continuing his own education. That said, the show is aware enough of his shortcomings and makes a few point of jabs at this Italian guy teaching karate, citing whitewashing and cultural appropriation in one amusing scene.
one could wax on, wax off, about these representation issues, but the show's strength is also its weakness. Cobra Kai is simply too accurately a product of that specific 80s franchise. Sure, it could change, but why should it? The series remains entertaining despite its claws, and fortunately it has a hero that negotiates this disconnect between retro mindset and contemporary consciousness. Cobra Kai is ultimately Johnny's story. How he fumbles to find the right words to express his newfound morality, yet still reveals his old school outlook is both hilarious and endearing. His poor parenting history wars with his burgeoning mentoring instincts. He's well past, middle age and yet is making delightful discoveries about the world and himself right alongside his students. The 80s might be back in style, but Johnny 